Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat. Here I'm today with a Tanami News update. I've got a couple things to update you on now for this update today, February 4th, 2022. Now, the first big thing in news is that we have a new show announcement. And like I predicted, that new show is Attack on Titan Season 4 Part 2. It'll be coming on to Tanami next Saturday, February 12th at 12.30 a.m. The schedule for that date will be Shenmue at midnight, Back on Titan at 12.30, Assassination Station Classroom at 1, Made in Abyss at 1.30, One Piece at 2, One Piece at 2.30, Naruto Shippin' in at 3, and the Cowboy Bebop at 3.30. And this also answers a little bit of a question. They never formally gave us a schedule for tomorrow, uh, February 5th. Notable because we do have Shenmue debuting tomorrow at 12.30. The schedule really is very similar to the one I'm showing you right now for February 12th, except for where it says Shenmue at Midnight. That's the season and likely series finale of Blade Runner Black Lotus, considering it's very low ratings. At Midnight with Shenmue at 12.30. And then after that, you see, what you're seeing there is exactly what you're getting. You're getting Assassination Classroom at 1, Made in Abyss 1.30, One Piece at 2, One Piece at 2.30, Narden at 3, and then Cowboy Bebop at 3.30. But... Ultimately, and that's another thing to point out here, Shenmue does debut tomorrow night. It is one of Adult Swim slash Crunchyroll's original shows. The last two being Fan of Pirate Princess and Blade Runner Black Lotus, both of which did generally poorly in ratings, especially Blade Runner Black Lotus, with a weird mixed reception, where reception from audiences being mixed to generally poor, but critics saying being very, very positive on it. And I didn't formally see the review, but I did see that the reception, the critics' reception for Shenmue so far has been very positive, which should be a very bad sign for how good it is, because recently, and especially in terms of anime criticism, when big-name publications are saying good things about it, it's typically a bad sign for how good it really is. I mean, for example, Fan of Pirate Princess ended up on a lot of American critics' lists of best anime of 2020. And I don't know a single otaku that would, of 2021, I couldn't think of a single otaku that would, otaku would set, tell you with a straight face that Fan was one of the top 10 anime of last year. Especially if all the stuff come in Japan, and especially towards later you go in the year, it being kind of a strong year for anime. But again, with anime growing in market share in the U.S., that's the impression you're going to keep getting, that anime keeps getting bigger and bigger, and it's just not going to stop, you know. Even with Tanami becoming less and less of a market force, anime is just getting stronger and more powerful at this point, you know. You can't hope to stop it, you can only hope to contain it, like they would say in the 90s on SportsCenter. But I digress. Back being on topic here. Attack on Titan, back at 12.30. No one is surprised about this. This is the last bit of a deal Tanami struck like in 2013 or so, which was insanely one-sided in favor of Tanami, basically saying that they get first at first dibs on English dub rights. And note back then there was Sony did not really put much emphasis on Funimation streaming. Now they do. So again, so by rule, by this contract, Tanami gets to air the dub of Attack on Titan before it gets put on Funimation now. And that's something that seems so weird compared to right now how all the streaming deals are going to Sony, are going to Funimation, and Tanami gets last pickings, really. So, and that leads to, and this is the last case we're ever going to get of something so one-sided in Tanami's favor, probably, with Attack on Titan being on at 12.30, and again, they're doing what they've done previously with Fan of Pirate Princess and Blade Runner Black Lotus and putting their big new Adult Swim original show at the very top, despite Shenmue being a very obscure franchise, really. I didn't even know it existed until I first saw the announcement that Tanami's making an anime based on Shenmue. I had to look it up. And I think a lot of people had to, too. There's quite a few people who did post, well, I remember this game from when I was younger. But again, it's not like something like Blade Runner where it's become this classic franchise. And that's going to be the issue with Shenmue. No one knows what the hell it is. And maybe that does work for the better because that gives you a little bit of breathing room with plot and with where the show can go. 
where although it may be privy to where the games went in plot, maybe they would might have a bit of freedom knowing that, again, it's not that well-known a franchise already. But again, you have Attack on Titan after that. Again, the last, the last hurrah of Attack on Titan as the series comes to a close. And like I said, I predicted it. Everyone predicted it. I think I tweeted... That my next prediction was that Attack on Titan's the next new show, and I was right. So, again, interesting thing there. Not much to say outside of that. So, the other bit of news is that we finally have the ratings from this past Saturday, January 29th, 2022. Let's start at the top of the block. At the top of the block, you have Blade Runner Black Lotus at a .05, Made in Abyss at a .05, Sass Station Classroom at a .05, One Piece at a .04, followed by .03, Nardo at a point zero two, followed by point zero three, and Cowboy Bebop has yet to be reported yet. This is by a good margin the lowest ratings ever for a non-marathon night. It actually might be lower than any marathon night we've had ever. The Fan of Pirate Princess Marathon back on Halloween night, close to this in terms of average. But I've looked around. I really can't conceive why things dropped nearly 50% in one week. Because I don't think there was a big UFC event. There was no NFL on Saturday this past week. And there was no very notable college basketball games or anything to happen this past Saturday night. Or any massive news events that might draw people's attentions away. I really think this is a case of people just not giving a shit. <laughs> like, I really can't think of anything else at this point, you know. And maybe it's the shows you have in the block. I mean, I think people just want Blade Runner out of here. I, I haven't seen much positive reception to this, but definitely in the last few weeks. I think a lot of people just want this to be over with. It feels like the obligation at this point. Then you have Made in Abyss, a show which, like I've said, I absolutely love so far. I can kind of see how a lot of people aren't drawn to it, though. It's I'm not going to say it's a niche anime, because it does have that very shonen-esque hero's journey trope. Or at least we're seeing the start of it with Rico and Reg going into the abyss at the end of the last episode. One more thing on this past episode. Episode 3 was more or less an exposition dump of an episode. It still was an amazing episode. And that's a feat. Because again, and I'm going to keep comparing shows to The Promised Neverland Season 2. There was like two different episodes of Promised Neverland in Season 2 that was just exposition dumps. And they were a slog to go through. You know, you know a show, you know an episode is good, you know an episode is good when you don't have to look at your watch, you don't have to look at, see how long's left in the episode, you're just along for the ride. And even though half this episode is them just sitting around talking, I was intrigued by it. It has amazing world building. Amazing. The character motivations make sense. And although I don't love Rico as a character, I'm still rooting for her, I still like her as a person, in a way. Like, she seems like, to me, like a poor man's Emma from The Promised Neverland so far. Like, in terms of being, like, a caring, sweet person, she's got that. Except for Emma, where Emma's, like, very smart and savvy. Rico's just a bag of rock the pop. Where you have Nate, I forgot his name, having to be the rational one. You have the kid with the glasses being the smart one. And you have Pee Wee, the kid with the white hair, being Phil. You know, that's just what it feels like. But still, I am so intrigued by the show, and I am looking forward to watching it tomorrow night. And then in Assassination Classroom, a lot of these shows, like you can point Assassination Classroom, and honestly, One Piece, Naruto, fit into the category of their rating is going to be completely dictated by the show in front of it. And you can't blame them for that. And that's one thing, too. People pointing out how it looks like we're going to keep a double header of One Piece. If there is one show on Earth that you almost have to do double headers of, it is One Piece because of how very little happens in each actual episode. So if Konami decides to keep it this way, where it's two new episodes a week of One Piece, well, it's not new, but two episodes of One Piece a week, then I'm on, honestly, I'm for it. Because, again, it's just like, there are points where it's not even a chapter an episode. <laughs> but I digress. Konami, shitty waitings week, but we have a shuffled up schedule this week with Shenmue filling in. And we're also, the week after that, going to have Attack on Titan back. Attack on Titan always being a darling on Tanami, so maybe these ratings do improve. And a lot of people talk about how they like how the schedule sets up a couple weeks from now. Yeah, I could definitely see that point, because you do have a number of standards on the block. Like, you have Naruto, that's going to be on the block until the heat death of the universe. 
One Piece, which will probably now be on the block until the heat death of the universe. And then you have Attack on Titan, which, again, was one of the big animes of the 2010s. What do you guys think? Leave your comments, leave your opinions down below. I love your input. Like and subscribe. I am the Super Orange Cat, and that is all.